Most optimization problems which occur in real life have some sort of constraint attached to them. Often, these constraints are things like time, money, or materials. Our goal is to determine how to solve such problems with the tools at our disposal. At this point, our problems will almost always be of the form find the max or min of the function f of xy subject to the constraint g of xy equals k. But now you might be going, ah, these are functions with two variables, and we don't know how to deal with such things. Well, our technique will be to use the constraint g of xy equals k to rewrite f so that it depends only on a single variable. This new function will have the constraint baked into it, and at that point we can find its max or min using the usual procedure. The best way to see this is with an example. Let's suppose that a farmer is building three pastures immediately adjacent to one another, and I'm going to draw them here so that you know what I'm talking about. However, he only has 240 meters of fencing with which to work. What should the dimensions of the pastures be in order to maximize the total area? Hopefully you can see why, without a constraint, this is a dumb problem. If there's no restriction on the amount of fencing the farmer can use, the biggest pasture he can make is arbitrarily large, right? No maximum exists. It's the addition of a constraint which makes this an interesting and ultimately solvable problem. The first thing we want to do is give variable names to the side lengths of the fences. Let's call the long side x and the short side y. The pastures as drawn just form a rectangle, and the area of that rectangle is just x times y. The perimeter is a bit trickier, but not too bad. The pasture has two long sides and four short sides, giving a total perimeter of 2x plus 4y. Assuming that we use all 240 meters of fencing, that means that 2x plus 4y is equal to 240. This is our constraint. According to our technique, we want to use this to write f as a function of just one variable. I'm going to solve the constraint for x. And so writing x equals 120 minus 2y and substituting that into the area function f, we get the following. This is now just a function of y, which I'm going to give the name f hat because it's technically different from f. We now find the maximum of f hat using our usual technique. Let's differentiate the function and find its critical points. That derivative is pretty easy to compute, and setting it to 0, we get y equals 30. This is definitely a maximum. Applying the second derivative test, for example, since it's so easy to differentiate, gives us f double prime of y is negative 4, which is negative. Great. So with our y value, let's then find the corresponding x value. To do this, we'll use the equation for x that we found earlier, which gives us x is equal to 60. So our claim is that xy equals 60, 30 is the global maximum. All that's left to check is the endpoints. Looking at the constraint and using the fact that x and y can't be negative, we see that the two extremes for the sizes of x and y are 120, 0 and 0, 60. But of course, these can't be maxima because they both give an area of zero. Thus, throwing away the endpoints, we can conclude that the dimensions which maximize the area of the pasture occurs when x is equal to 60 and when y is equal to 30.